Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my review covering the Moondrop Critical Dusk, and the primary focus here is going to be gaming, but I do have to reiterate what others have already said, some of the top audiophile reviewers that I love, that I watch, and you guys probably watch too, but this is absolutely a market disruptor. I've tried a lot of IEMs on this channel now, a lot of things for obviously a crossover between music and gaming, gaming being, again, my primary focus. But in this price range, this is hands down the best IEM I've ever listened to for my music tracks, which kind of mirror that of HBB. A lot of rap, Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West, J. Cole, Logic, etc. And this is an IEM that has definitely made me go back to some of the albums like Under Pressure from Logic. I've sat down, I've listened to that now through two times because of how good this particular IEM sounds. It is absolutely immaculate. You have a bass and sub bass that feel a low end that just feels so um, emphasized in its punch, but not too much and so clean and textured and technical and fast and not bloated feeling. It is such a amazing experience to hear that bass, but then you get to the presence region and the treble and the high end, and you have like these perfect sounding cymbal strikes that never feel too much or lacking, even though of that emphasized and fast and technical bass, um, you hear that air coming off of those cymbal strikes, and it's so clean and fast and well represented while still maintaining one of the best sounding mid ranges that I've heard to date. Male vocals, female vocals, an accurate timbre on pianos, guitars. I think it is the most well rounded IEM that I've tried, particularly in this price range, and something that just combats and competes with things that are in the kilo buck range, if not higher. I've recently tested the 64 Audio Velours. I absolutely love them, loved them for gaming. Um, but this, from a music perspective, I could sit down and listen to these and go back through my old albums and just not really have any critiques. He's done a tremendous and fabulous job with the Dusk. I don't have a tier list for music listening purposes. If I did, it goes without saying this would be S tier. I think it's the best thing that I've listened to up through this price range. In terms of the goodies that you get in the box, you do get a 3.5 cable. I have a 635 adapter on it. It's not my favorite cable, but it gets the job done perfectly fine. It does come with a DSP cable. And I want to tell you guys that the DSP cable is beautiful for on-the-go audio listening purposes. If you're going to plug this into an Android, your iPad, whatever has that USB-C connection. Um, but I did have issues with this on my PC, particularly in Apex, for instance. When too many things were happening in the game, my game would actually start to freeze. And that was solely because of this being ran, my audio being ran through the DSP cable. So you might have issues in certain games. Playing uh, Deathmatch and Valorant, I didn't have that issue. Um, but in Call of Duty, I did as well. The DSP cable matches the IEM almost perfectly. It is exceptionally comfortable and it has a nice braid to it that you're not going to have many issues with any tangling or anything like that. The IEM, I believe, comes with the uh, Moondrop spring tips that do make this IEM feel ever so slightly more uh, open, a little bit more air, a little bit brighter than moving to the SpinFit W1s that made the um, soundstage ever so slightly more intimate and that bass came out a little bit more. So with fish mouth nozzles like on the Dusk, I do find that the tips actually do make quite a difference on uh, fish mouth nozzled IEMs. The shell is absolutely beautiful. That faceplate, carbon fiber, looks like wood. The craftsmanship, just the overall aesthetic, absolutely beautiful. Probably one of my favorite IEMs to date. And then you have that a little bit of a extended in terms of its overall height and protrusion out of the ear. But I had absolutely no comfort issues. It is one of the most lightweight IEMs uh, with a tri-brid driver configuration that I've personally had. Um, very comfortable. I love the transparent chassis. Everything just is that real, I'm entering the hobby feel, that transparent shell, seeing all those drivers, um, beautiful aesthetic, beautiful build. Uh, it really is just a really, really nice IEM. In the box, the only other thing you'll get, you guys will get are different sizes of the tips, and then you will get a uh, kind of typical Moondrop carrying case. I'm not going to dig through right now. Um, 
The IEM itself, I, most importantly, again, my channel focuses on competitive gaming, not gaming, uh, but competitive gaming. And to say that IEMs don't have or an audio product doesn't have a particularly large influence in your overall ability to perceive things in game and your reaction time in game to those audio cues um, would just be inaccurate. For competitive play, playing on this compared to something higher on my tier list, you will notice an absolute difference. Uh, particularly for me, it is a difference in my reaction time, my difference in my um, comfort level in peaking certain areas, let's say in Apex, um, and just being able to pull out some audio cues where on some IEMs you might not be able to even hear. In Apex Legends, I'll start there. I, I do have my notes and I'll go over a little bit of um, some clips here and there that you guys can actually see. But the first, first and foremost, I do want to talk about uh, verticality. There are a lot of scenarios in Apex Legends where people will be above you either at a distance or even directly above you and you do need to hear things being able to go over your head on a particular IEM or headphone. On the Dusk, there's too much of a mesh. As soon as something gets to about your forehead in feel, it is very hard to pick up where on what level something is. So um, I'll show you guys a clip, but you'll see how my crosshair kind of transitions and it's because the audio almost felt like it was on the same level and I just didn't get that hit that I would have wanted from a particular IEM with that precise over the head element, that feel of verticality being accurate and depth perception, which comes into play um, with vertical audio as well. For instance, an Octane taking a jump pad, a Valkyrie flying above you, somebody flying in from a balloon, you need to hear those things over your head with a lot of accuracy. The soundstage in Apex Legends does feel kind of close to you. It feels intimate. So things that are a little bit further away kind of fall down and drop off a little bit. People sliding, people walking at a distance, those light taps or shuffles through grass, which kind of provide a more of an upper region whooshing sound as opposed to a deep thawk uh, of a footstep that the thawkiness shines through on this IEM. Um, so there's very different elements of different sounds for footsteps in something like Apex and that open map, I feel you need to have those accuracies at uh, depth perception as well as verticality. And those are just things that I found a little bit lacking on the dusk. The imaging, when I first took these in Apex, I thought that this would be making the Wallhack certified tier list. I thought these sounded fantastic. And the imaging is good. Don't get me wrong. This is something that you can move from music to gaming. You'll still have a good experience. Um, but when we are comparing it directly, I A and B tested this to the um, Splendor 2s, the Hype 4s, the um, uh, Yanyan Cannon 2s. There's just things that make a absolute difference, uh, unquestionably, objectively speaking, uh, in game. Uh, again, being able to even hear things in general um, is, is certainly a, uh, a pretty big thing, particularly when we're talking about competitive play. The uh, bassy personal audio cues, because of that intimacy in the soundstage, do shine through with a lot of emphasis, a lot of effect, a lot of rumble. So Octane stim packs, jumping on an Octane pad, Bangalore smokes, Valkyrie flying in the air, Valkyrie cues, um, uh, different things like a Seer cue, um, Bangalore ultimate, Gibraltar ultimate, all things that when they are happening, I'm noticing too much drop off on the other things that are around me in the game. Um, when multiple people are shooting, it's it becomes hard to separate out in your head where the audio cues are happening. There's too much of a mush with layering and separation. But as soon as that ends, as soon as there's that fall off in some of those audio cues happening, it kind of picks up again very quickly because of its drive and technicality in those regions that you begin to start to hear things again. But when that audio drop off happens, and it happens a lot in Apex Legends, you just lose too much information and you're going to find yourself even like I did as a two time Predator player, multiple time Masters player, um, you're going to feel kind of 
um, like a deer in the headlights is the best way I can describe it. So yes, audio products make an absolute difference no matter your skill level or your skill gap. If you're a rookie player, um, certainly uh, I, I would hope that you would want to at least have as much of accurate information as you can. Even as a competitive player, I try to min-max either the refresh rate on my monitor uh, or the particular reads on my IEMs. Everything makes a difference and everything adds up. The thing that I notice most for my particular gameplay and my reaction time is audio. Other people might find that to be refresh rate. Other people might find that to be click latency. Uh, for me, it's audio, hands down, no questions asked. It's harder to read info again in Apex uh, with sliding, climbing, when a lot is going on. The info just kind of gets muddled. It, it ceases. And then there's some IEMs where things, little things in game kind of shine through with a lot of detail. Light taps on uh, in buildings or doors opening, shuffles, slides, climbing up walls, zip lines, people popping shield cells. Those things are a little bit more muted on the Dusk in comparison to other things on the uh, Wallhack certified tier list. But I think most importantly, just that data drop off when a lot is happening, as well as verticality were its biggest downfalls for me for Apex Legends. Just to kind of give you guys an example, as I am pushing into this lifeline, as I'm primarily shooting him, it's a little hard to pick up on the footsteps that are happening around that particular lifeline. When I stim pack Q, I actually didn't have any footsteps plus the level up here um, coming off in the audio effects. I don't have any audio on this guy actually rounding the corner, but I get a little lucky by peeking through and seeing the top of his head and I'm able to pick up that kill. Right here, I hear footsteps above me, um, but I thought it was right on this level. So you'll see him like looking here for footsteps. He was actually one floor higher. He wasn't on the same level as me. And right here, um, I hear f uh, shots coming from my right and I turn and I thought they were on the same level. So you'll see I'm kind of like looking here as opposed to up top because the verticality is just a little off. I'll play the same clips for you in a little more detail. And was I still able to get good games while using the Dusk? Of course. Of course, playing at a high skill level in a particular FPS, I'm still going to be able to play well. But am, am I able to play at my comfortable top level? That's really what the question is when you're talking about ranked competitive grinding and all of that time wasted trying to decipher on what level someone is. I'm losing time micromanaging my DPS, my damage output. And I'm also, in, in, in certain scenarios, um, mishandling the micromanagement of my heals because I'm not hearing the things that are happening around me with enough information, enough read. And that's a very crucial in a game like Apex Legends. And when we talk about that crossover to Call of Duty, it's a little bit of the same thing. You have to be able to hear where people are coming from all around you, the floor that they're on, how far they are, people flying in above you. While these random audio cues are going off, or very loud audio cues like airstrikes, mortar strikes, etc. And the aerial audio cues are very tough to read. Of course, you can hear and tell that there is a parachute when you hear one, um, but it's really a lack of being able to quickly and accurately swap to where that person is in the air because of that verticality. But I did feel that people in buildings, of course, above me, below me, it was actually not that bad of a read because the footsteps are more bass heavy. When somebody's running above you in a building, you guys know that play Resurgence. It's a very loud thump, 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 thump. It's very different than the normal footsteps. But things, again, at a distance or things when um, a lot is going on or grenades, smokes are going off, etc., or I'm shooting, the little slides or the running in grass little swimming, those things are a little bit harder to pick up in Call of Duty. And in terms of the last game that I tested, Valorant, in Valorant, it actually was handled the best. But of course, we have a different scenario. It's that close range, tax shooter map, 5v5, 
less things going on, but the things that you'll notice are, again, when in the rare circumstance in Valorant, somebody is at height, it may come off a little, uh, again, a little wishy-washy, but it's a little more noticeable, of course, because people don't get too high. Overall, the imaging is actually quite good, but when you do have certain numbers of things going on around you, like teammates shooting vandals and grenades going off, etc., the a lot of basey things will cover up a few of the subtle things, but overall, I did find that Valorant handled the best. Overall, horizontal imaging, so when people are coming from behind a wall to peek, could have been a little bit more of an accurate read, and I do think that depth perception could have been ever so slightly better as well. But overall, Valorant did handle the best out of all of the games I tested. Of course, again, the primary issues being games with a lot of verticality and games with a lot going on that will muddle a lot of the more um, light things or just data in general being able to be read. So the takeaway for the Dusk, I think this is an absolutely killer IEM for music. Not all things are made for music and gaming. I don't think that the focus here was on gaming as a primary use case scenario. I think that if you're somebody who wants something exceptionally good in this price range, again, the best of the best, go ahead and get the Dusk. I can't recommend it enough for a gaming crossover if you want to have fun and have that very immersive sound with very good bass quality and quantity, as well as just an overall amazing resolution and tuning. It is a phenomenal IEM for that S-tier music experience in this price range with a beautiful IEM. It is, again, I think, a, I agree with everyone else. It's a market disruptor and just absolutely insane in terms of its overall sound quality. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.